first. I don't know if many people, I'm certain the band don't know this. We, this is a, it's a milestone. We're in a, we've got a milestone to mention. This, tonight, right here. You, you can say you were there. This, you won't believe it, it's our 900th show. 900 shows. What about that? Hercules, Hercules. Honestly, you could have told me any number between 500 and 6,000, I would have believed you. 900 shows. Isn't it amazing we lasted this long? <laughs> when you think about some of the stuff we've done, I'm still haunted every day by the fact that we once played a game called Are You Smarter Than a Whoopi Goldberg Impersonator? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that, Reg? Do you oh, remember when we played that I, game? I remember that very well. <laughs> we played it once yep. with Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> If there was any way to make that game worse, <laughs> Christian Slater was looking at me during the game like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and I had to sort of go up to him afterwards and go, ah, oh, sorry about that, man. He was like, that was super weird, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you're, you're one of the head writers on the show. You've been here since day one. You started in the, here in this building before I did. Yeah. Which bit have you been pitched that you're most amazed made it to air? I mean, musical shares. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say musical shares was rescued by when we did it the second time with share. That, that, that was a huge <laughs> upgrade. Yes. I, I pit, technically, I pitched musical shares. I had it to fill out the page. Yes. It was, I had, like, eight <laughs> ideas where I'm like, these will be good, and then musical chairs at the bottom where I'm like, it sounds like chairs, and <laughs> we did it on the show. We did it on the show. The first time we did it with Tig Notaro. Yeah. Dressed as Cher. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there's that, there's that. It's our 900th show. You know what we're doing to celebrate our 900th show tonight? What? This, me telling you that that's it, that's it. That's <laughs> <what we're... laughs> That's the celebration. But you know who's back? Heard it's our 900th show. Realised... Cos we were going to do a huge celebration. We had a whole thing planned. Gwen Stefani was going to sing a song. <laughs> we were going to, like... She was going to be, like, 900 shows. That's bananas. Be... Like, that whole... We had a whole thing. <laughs> and then we thought, no. We don't need to do that. You know why? You know who stepped in on camera three? <laughs> of course he is. George is back in the house! <laughs> There he is! George, how are you? OK. <laughs> Missed you, George. Missed you, too. What are you doing this weekend? Nothing. Want to hang? Sure. Cool. If someone had told you a year ago that you'd be here on camera three, 900th show, what would you, what would you have said to your 12-year-old self? What time? Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> have you been vaccinated, George? Almost. One should, which, 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 one, which one should you go for? Don't know yet. It's a big choice. A big choice, big choice. All right, you're right there. As soon as me and you are vaccinated, that's it, we're gonna be like Thelma and Louise. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. We're just gonna drive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love that you're here, George. Not only that, guess who else is back in the studio? Fresh from his trip. Back from Ojai with Paddy Lapone. We gotta talk about this, Dave, because all of the YouTube comments in the mono have all been saying, Where's Dave? What's been happening with Paddy Lapone? No, I've seen the comments. I've been following along. And I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but what happens in Ojai stays in Ojai. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Have you had any more correspondence with Paddy? Uh, well, no, no, not since I got back. Not but... since you... <laughs> <laughs> well, we missed you, Dave. We did. No, I'm happy to be back. We're thrilled that you're here. You were actually doing a little dance before the show. Well, Louis asked me to do a silly little dance before the show started. <laughs> and I went for it. You did? Yeah. Is that the sort of dancing that you and Paddy Lapone get up to? <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman never tells. <laughs>
<laughs> You're full with the answers tonight. <laughs> I had a feeling this line of questioning was coming. <laughs> right. Why did you want Dave to do a silly little dance, Louis? Why not? Why? Yeah, you're right. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why don't you do a silly little dance? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 mean... <laughs> you mean a silly little 900 dance? Yeah. yeah. I'll do a silly little 900 dance. Come on, then. If you've got a silly 900... Sure. 900 all right. <laughs> with, with no music, just a dance without music, yeah? yeah? A little, a funny okay. little dance. That's a silly little yeah, dance. Yeah, good, yeah. Have you got a silly little sure. dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually your best dance. It is, yeah. I, for me, and my, me and Jules, on our wedding anniversary, we, we thought we'd sit and we'd watch the video from our, our wedding, and we'd never watched it since we got married. It <laughs> is full of Louis, who... <laughs> I'm certain was drunk, and <laughs> it, the entire video is Louis finding the camera on a dance floor <laughs> doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then it'll, and then it'll go off somewhere else in the <laughs> wedding, and it'll be like filming, you know, our parents sort of having a little boogie. <laughs> Who comes around the corner? <laughs> Um, so that's it. We're all caught up. 900 shows. <laughs> Are you just waiting to open a can of water, Reggie? Yeah, I'm just waiting for that right moment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> who's, been, who's been here since day one? Show of hands, who's been here from day one? Look at us. Pete, were you not here day one? I came in on 13, sir. Came in on 13. Yes, yeah, yeah, lucky sense. 13. The network called. They watched all 12 and they went, something's got to change. <laughs> <laughs> something's got to change. We called George. He wasn't that chatty. Pete came down, it was done. <laughs> came in. Lucky 13, that's what I call you. That's it. Nice shirt tonight, Pete. Thanks. What are we looking at here, sharks? Fins up, baby. Fins sharks. up, baby. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what fins up baby means, but I love it. <laughs> so that's it, 900 shows, and bless you all. Bless all, every single one of you, but you know what's really gonna make this 900 show special? No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's gonna make the 900th show special is if we give America what they really want. <clears throat> we give them what they come for. What do they come for, Joel? The news. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're America's mouthpiece. Yep, exactly. We say what America's thinking. Yep. Could we make that a hashtag, Abo? On it. Not, what about, what, what do you like? It's not news, it's the news? Yeah. He doesn't like it. Brilliant. You know I'd love to have dinner with? You know I'd love to have dinner with? You and George. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. Can we do that? Sure. You want a drink, George? Yep. <laughs> what are you going to order? Steak. <laughs> I love it. Fries to the table? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it, guys. <clears throat> Do you know what? Sometimes I wish... <laughs> I wish we could have the experience of not being here, <laughs> but being in every living room in America right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Every... Think about that, what we're doing. Every single living room in America right now is going, shh, shh, he's doing the news. <laughs> Already, I thought, he'd do, I thought he'd do more, just banter with the crew. No, he's getting into the news now. Six-year-old kids in their James Corden doing the news pajamas, rubbing yeah. their eyes, yeah. just up at 12.37. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma, 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 <laughs> grandma, <laughs> grandma. <laughs> 
grandma. <laughs> what is it, dear? It's 12.42. Well, then it must be time for the news. <laughs> Bang, TV on. Big old bar fight in Florida. You yeah. know what I mean? Just people throwing punches, <laughs> chairs getting broken, glasses, you know, the bartender, shotgun, <laughs> right in the air. Hey! It's time for the news. <laughs> and, ever... and they hear this. It's time for you to do it again. <laughs> hey! It's time for the news. <laughs> Good evening. There was a big blow. <laughs> <laughs> People say to me, they come up to me in the street and they say, They come up and they say, how would you cope with the pressure? <laughs> Carrying the nation's news on your shoulders. And do, you, and do you know what I say? Honestly, honestly, I just look them in the eye and I say, fins up, baby. <laughs> fins up. <laughs> there was a big blow to President Biden's agenda today. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia came out firmly against any vote to eliminate or weaken the filibuster. And with a 50-50 Senate, it means Republicans will be able to block key legislation. Every day I learn something new about the American political system. Today I learned that the most powerful man in American politics right now is someone I've never heard of from a state I'm not entirely sure even exists. <laughs> See, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even know that Joe Manchin was a real person. I just thought it was a term Joe Biden used to describe rich people. Like, whoa, look at Joe Manchin over here. Excuse me. <laughs> and did everybody see this? Rudy Giuliani's son, Andrew, is thinking about running for governor of New York. Yeah, uh... you know what they say? You've got to strike while the iron's insane. <laughs> No official announcement has been made. That will come as soon as Rudy finds a suitable landscaping shop for the press conference. <laughs> for those of you who aren't familiar, this is Andrew Giuliani right here. Now, here's my question. Is that Rudy Giuliani's son, or is Eric Trump just having an allergic reaction to shellfish? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And here's some interesting news. From the pandemic front, scientists have discovered that there's an existing drug that could help treat COVID, and it's an existing pill that's used to treat toenail fungus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> True, they don't call it a pedicure for nothing. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was, was trying to punctuate your joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what was what was the noise? Oh, uh, it's just I don't know. It's just that's Do the, the sound of me again. playing. Do yeah. the noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds like Zach Morris just realized he has two dates tonight. Is <laughs> that safe by the bell? Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it again. They don't call it a pedicure for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is an amazing discovery, though, although for some reason the toenail infection scientist is choosing to remain anonymous. <laughs> although this is great for people who are insecure about their toenail infections. Do you know what I mean? Now if someone gives them a weird look for taking toenail fungus medication, you can be like, oh, no, don't worry, my toenails are fine, I've got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> toenail infection. I bet you're glad you haven't tucked into your salad yet, right? Well, it's still got its string on, so... Still got its string. <laughs> <laughs> A little salad humor. <sighs> James. What? Who said James? Don't do that. It hurt more yeah, than I thought. I know. No, don't, because I bruise like a peach. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know that. You know I do. That's a real worry. <laughs> On the 900th show. <laughs>
And we wanted to show you this. A Texas woman who holds the record for the world's longest fingernails has just clipped them for the first time in 30 years. Here she was before the clipping. Look at that. The nails were almost 289 inches long. You know what I think happened? You know why I think she cut them? Got an iPhone. <laughs> she just got an iPhone. She was like, I can't do this. Yeah. She clipped the longest fingernails in the world. Even worse, she did it on the subway. <laughs> when asked what the biggest adjustment has been since cutting her record-breaking fingernails, the woman replied, having to develop a personality. <laughs> Reg, you've got you've got one long now. Have you still got a long you still got a long zone? Yeah, I still got a long. You got a long zone. Would you ever consider growing them out 300 inches long? You know, I I would, except for when you grow your nails out really long, it gives you arthritis because you don't use your finger properly. Right, that's the issue. So I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do it. I like my hands a lot. Th th what was it? 300 inches? 30 inches? 289 inches. 289 inches. Steve. I'll bet you $10,000. Ah. <laughs> no and no person. <laughs> and finally, I don't know if everybody saw this, but former Vice President Mike Pence has just signed a two-book deal with Simon & Schuster that's worth up to $4 million. Ow! Yeah, plain white square. It's both the design and title of the book. <laughs> two, how does Mike Pence have enough material to write two books? I feel like I can summarise his entire life in two sentences. One, he was vice president. Two, a fly landed on his head. That's it. Yep. That's all there is. That's it. The first book is pretty straightforward memoir, but I was surprised by the second one. It's actually a steamy romance novel called Presidential Vices. 